Welcome to The Boiling Point, I'm Richie Ware. This is Brian Grindstaff, the man behind TheBoilerWarehouse.com and we wanted to make sure that we talk about sight glass today. Sight glass is something that is certainly important on a boiler. Um, first of all, what is it? What does it do? Uh, well, a sight glass is a code requirement for most of uh, equipment in a boiler room. Uh, to show you where your water level is at inside of your boiler. Okay. So you know you have enough water in it to keep it safe. Okay, now there's um, several different types um, yep. and, and I want to go over each one of those and then why we would use those on the different applications. Sure, so some of the most common types you see right here, you've got a red line sight glass, you've got what they call a reflex glass that's actually got uh, refraction here so you can actually see the water uh, through this refrac refraction on a on a heavy-duty type sight glass. Okay. Uh, they also make these in a flat type. Okay. Um, and really those are the two most common um, for for what would meet code on a boiler. Right. Um, you've got some other types that are like a like a magnetic or even the stuff that lights up and shows you by by lights. Right. Where where the water level is. Um, those that don't necessarily meet code by themselves, but those are other ways to get visual indications on the water level. And they're getting pretty sophisticated in that you got some remote yep. stuff as well, right? Yep. So uh, the mag magnetic stuff, the, uh, the, the probe type with, with the remotes, I mean, you can run those to operator rooms. You can, you know, really put them wherever you want to see, you know, to see that data of, of what that looks like. Right. So where would you use this? This, the red um, this is one of the most common, this is the most economical solution that you see in the boiler room. Mm -hmm. um, they go on small boilers up through, you know, some, some pretty large boilers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, manufacturers, they're, they're, they're an economical version to put, uh, like on uh, the McDonald Millers uh, is a common low water cutoff. Mm -hmm. So that's typically where you see these on, on ranges up to uh, really a couple hundred pounds. One of the questions that I know that's searched a lot is how do you actually measure the sight glass? Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, these lengths can all vary depending on what your boiler is. Uh, if you're putting this on one type of McDonald Miller or another, the dimensions are going to be slightly different. Right. So, uh, pretty much every manufacturer, you measure them the same way. So, okay. these are United Brass Valves. This back here looks like a set of Cambrico valves. Um, you really need to take a measurement from the center of the nut okay. from the bottom uh -huh. to the center of the nut on the top. Okay. That gives you a little room to slide it up, slide it back down in the bottom and tighten both ends okay. securely. Okay. So that'll give you a little bit of bite on both sides. Okay. Cool. Cool. That's good to know. Yeah. Okay. So why would we use the heavy duty? Well, the heavy duty, of course, um, you know, that's the Cadillac. The, this, is, this is made out of glass. And as you know, in, in, in uh, boiler rooms, there's a lot of vibration, there's a lot of temperature, there's a lot of, you know, industrial type things. Sometimes people can bump into things. Um, so while this is the economical version, this is more of a bulletproof type version. Okay. Um, so they're higher pressure rated. Um, like this, this assembly right here is rated for a thousand pounds. Okay. Um, these are typically rated for a couple hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we, we still put these on 150 PSI uh, boilers just for the simple fact that those can leak pretty regularly and they're pretty fa fragile because they're, they're glass. Sure, sure, which most of the rental equipment that we have in our trailers, we put those on the boiler. Yep. Um, and you see these on deaerators as well. Yeah, you'll see those on really almost anything. We, we've got them on our DAs. Um, it, anything that really has water in it, that's a really good way to do that. I mean, we've, we've seen them on oil tanks, DAs, feed water tanks, um, uh, blow down heat recoveries. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a cheap e economical way to be able to see your water level. Sure. All right. Well, perfect. Well, we appreciate the info. Boiler U instructor Jude Wolf is going to show you exactly how to replace the sight glass today on the boiling point. Um, this sight glass has been leaking a little bit intermittently, so we're going to go ahead and change it out. And we should change out a sight glass anytime we see any evidence of thinning on the glass, of steam leakage, or if it gets too dirty, we can't clear it by blowing it down. We want to change it out. But 
If we've got a leak on our sight glass, it'll actually show a false water level because the steam escaping. Um, but changing out a sight glass when we've got pressure on the boiler is something that we have to be very deliberate and careful when we do. So there's a safe way to do this, and I'm going to demonstrate that. First, if we're going to isolate a sight glass, especially if we've got a leak, if we close the steam connection first, uh, the leaking steam is going to allow this water to rise and blow out that connection. So I'm always going to open my drain first so that I can begin to depressurize the sight glass. Then I can close the water side and close the steam side and I can verify that these valves are holding. So these valves are secure and I'm going to remove the sight glass. First thing I have to do is remove the protection rods. These are generally here just so that we don't randomly knock the sight glass out. Secondly, we've got nuts here to loosen. That one was pretty loose. And what we'll see, we've got rubber gaskets top and bottom, and that's forming our seal. So we need to kind of work the glass up, get the gasket out of the way, and pull it down. And we heard a little crunching there. It's actually pretty easy to chip the sight glass when we're removing it. So I'm not gonna remove a sight glass unless I've got replacement glass and replacement gaskets. I always wanna replace both. I never wanna reuse a gasket. Now this is chipped, so how am I gonna tell exactly how long that sight glass needs to be? And I can show you that. So I've got a new piece of sight glass and we immediately see it's quite a bit longer than we need. So learning how to cut sight glass effectively is gonna save you a lot of trouble because what is our proper sight glass measurement? It's gonna vary depending on the brand and style of isolation valves. So the easiest thing to do is just cut it in the field. So what I wanna do is get a feel for how long that sight glass needs to be. When I install the sight glass, the top end is going to go up into that valve and the bottom has to clear this brass. So I can simply make a mark, give myself an extra eighth of an inch or so. And when that's installed, it'll come back down and sit within both valves. But that just gives me a reference point for cutting it. You want to make sure that your replacement washers are the same inside, outside diameter as the originals. Um, these are available in different materials and sometimes we find that some people just have more luck with one type than another, but these have worked well for us here, these black rubber. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. This is red line sight glass um, and the red and white pattern give you a visual indicator of where the water is because of refraction will make the red line wider and it's just a nice tool to make it easier to see the water level in the boiler. This is also rated for high pressure. It's got the HP on there for high pressure. So this would be suitable for 150 PSI boiler, no problem. Um, and of course, anything lower pressure than that. So this is the cutting tool that we like. Um, there are chain types. We, I just have the best luck with this. Um, Cutting glass is really about confidence and not over scoring the glass. So we want to do a minimum score at our mark and we're basically going to scratch or etch about a quarter inch mark in the side of the glass. If you over score the glass and try to go all the way around, you're actually more likely to break it when you snap the glass. So to snap the glass, you put your thumbs opposite the score mark and just do a quick, confident snap. Yeah, so once I've cut this, I'm just gonna go over before I put the gaskets on it and make sure it fits in case I measured wrong. Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick fit up check. Yep. So as you can see, that actually sits up in there and then falls back down. 
And cutting it long like that gives me plenty of material up in the top for my gasket to seat. So I'll pull that back off and I'll get these gaskets ready. So the brass nut, its purpose is obvious. It's screwing up against that and compressing our gasket. But these brass washers, they actually do two functions. One function is they compress the gasket against the internal seating surfaces. The second function is it eliminates friction between my ring here and the gasket. So on some of these, you'll actually have, uh, some sets you'll have a little thin copper gasket, but in this case, we've got a beveled brass insert that's actually gonna help compress that. So I wanna put these gaskets on way higher then I'll want them so I've got plenty of room to maneuver the glass. So once I've got the glass in position, I just wanna make sure that my gaskets are pushed down into position, and then I want to make sure that my glass doesn't actually set against the metal in the bottom valve, um, because I don't want metal on metal in this. The rubber is actually forming um, all the connections between the glass and the brass, uh, and that's going to make it less likely to be in a in a bind and, and crack on tightening or anything like that. So once I get these started, and I'll just turn these till they start to snug. I'll give the glass a little bit of a twist and I'll move it up and down so that I can verify the glass isn't resting on the bottom in that valve. Then I can hand tighten these, and oftentimes that's plenty tight enough to seal this. So now I need to valve this back in. Um, the proper order doing this is going to ensure that I don't spray water in my face um, if there's a failure. So I'm always going to open the steam first because that's going to preheat all the glass to the same temperature. Once I've got the steam open, I can close this and open the bottom connection as well. Now I've got a little dripping on my packing up here. That's not unusual because that has cooled down and heated back up. So I can just take a wrench, just give that a slight amount of turn. I don't want to over tighten it because I may need to retighten that a number of times in its life. Um, we'll open this the rest of the way. Open that the rest of the way. And there's our glass at its normal level. So we'll go ahead and put our guard rod, rods back in there and uh, we're good to go. Appreciate Jude hanging out with us and showing us how to replace that sight glass. Remember that if you do need a sight glass, you can always go out to BoilerWarehouse.com, the newly designed website, and we have made getting parts very, very easy. And as always, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. If you don't mind, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, share the videos and go out and check out all the stuff that we've got out there. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.